So we have the pleasure of introducing one of our most favorite people, Dr. Nancy Grasmick, who's going to talk to us. Um, so if you Google Dr. Grasmick or search Kennedy Krieger, you can read her bio. It's very long. Um, we're going to give you some of the highlights, but we're also going to tell you um, some connections with Dr. Grasmick that relate to UDL and us. So Dr. Grasmick actually started her career as a teacher. So she taught, she has done what we have all done. I'm um, actually a teacher of the deaf. She's a Towson University alum. She earned her master's degree at Gallaudet University and her doctorate at Johns Hopkins. In the time since then, she has been everything from a supervisor, coordinator, principal, and then her job before the presidential scholar at Towson was the superintendent of Maryland. And she is actually the longest running male or female superintendent in the country. 20 years she served in that role. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> and now Nancy serves on over 13 boards and she's active in all of them. She also plays the harp and can <laughs> is um, a very skilled gardener, like topiaries, so not what I do. Um, <laughs> we also are grateful that she's our presidential scholar here at Towson, and she also, the other half of her time, is at Kennedy Krieger, co-directing the Center for Leadership and Special Education, where Lisa works. So you can read all about her many accolades, the zillions of awards she's done, the projects she's supported, um, if you look at her bio. But what you won't find in there is what she does for the people that she works with. And that, to me, is about universal design for learning because it's about fostering community and collaboration. It's about giving people multiple ways to learn and show what they know. And that's what she's done for me and for Lisa. So when I think about my learning and my relationship from Nancy, I think about um, many things, but universal design for learning, the projects that she supported. If Dr. Grasmick is going to put her stamp on something, if she's going to stand behind something, it's because she believes in it. And she has been a firm supporter of universal design for learning for a very long time. We're the first state in the nation to have legislation about UDL, which she'll talk about. And she has brought that support here to Towson, where she has um, really contributed um, funding and time and advice and wisdom to our UDL projects that have been recognized nationally, both in the Baltimore County Public Schools with some amazing principals like Nikki Norris, you heard from her yesterday, and also here at Towson on our campus, bringing some of the most um, influential speakers in UDL to Towson, from David Rose to Sammy Daly, um, to Todd Rose, so pretty amazing. Louis Lord Nelson, um, we've had some fabulous people here. So I wanted to share that, and then I also want Lisa to talk a little bit about Kennedy Krieger and some things that she's learned from Dr. Grasm. Um, so as mentioned yesterday, Kennedy Krieger has a fellowship program for special education teachers to learn about neuroscience, behavior science, school law, and research methods. And um, Nancy is the co-director of that program. And as a fellow, I spent a lot of time touring around different sites to learn more about what was going on um, in special education that was really good examples of what can be done and what's possible. And if you go anywhere with Nancy, she knows everyone. Um, and it's amazing. And she doesn't just know their names, but she knows what they're doing and what they're passionate about. And I think one of the best things is that she connects people who have similar passions and so that you can get things done for the kids that we all care about. And I think that that's just a really, has been in Maryland and anywhere else that she's touched is a really, really powerful thing about Nancy and about how UDL has really been supported in this state because of those efforts and because that that's the way she operates. And that's why we wanted to share that with you, because um, I always look to others for inspiration. So this is a networking and research conference. So what a better person to learn about than Dr. Nancy Grasmick. Well, good morning. They certainly made me look good, and it's downhill from there. But um, happy St. Patrick's Day, and certainly, again, welcome to Towson so it's, University. It's, it's so wonderful to have you here. And for me, this is really a dream come true. In 2010, 
I was very troubled by the idea that there was a sense of separation. If you're in special education, we'll attempt to do some specific things for you to accelerate your learning. But if you're in typical education, there wasn't much in terms of customizing learning for students. And so I worked hard to find sponsors in our legislature who would give the idea that there needs to be a route to successful learning for every single student. And so I asked if they would um, put through a bill that would require the development of a task force to look at successful learning with um, UDL being the major part of that effort. And so um, in 2010, that was passed in the Maryland um, legislature. And as a result of the um, work of the task force, was, which was incredible, and it was a real big coalition of people looking at every facet of student learning, we were able to um, then have a report that was embraced by the State Board of Education. And the next step, which was envisioned at the very beginning of this process, was to say that we're going to place this in our COMAR regulations across, so that it impacts every school in the state of Maryland, all 1,700 schools. And so um, it said, the title of the report and the recommendation was a route for every learner with UDL as the framework. And so in 2012, the J State Board of Education approved this. It became part of our COMAR regulations. And um, we not only saw it as absolutely critical to the success of our students, but we also saw it as one of the major reform efforts in the state of Maryland. Actually, we called it the third wave of reform. We started in <clears throat> 1991, being one of the first states to develop accountability measures for our students. We then revised that in about 2002 to say we had to take um, a different route to how we were ex assessing um, our students. And then we saw UDL as being the third wave of reform, which actually elevated UDL to be so important in our whole trajectory of how we were going to nurture successful learning for our students. So the thing that um, became significant to me and why I think you are so important is that then after the passage of this um, in 2012, we began to visit lots and lots of schools to see if in fact we were implementing UDL with any level of fidelity. And we found out two things, which will not be surprising to any of you and why this conference really warms my heart. We found that people knew the terminology UDL, Universal Design for Learning. They really did not know how to implement it with any level of fidelity and that many people believed it was only relevant to students with disabilities and not all students. So our work has really been cut out for us. People like um, Dr. Berquist, who is beyond amazing, has engaged herself with our school systems and, and the entire campus of um, Towson University to elevate universal design for learning in how we're working in every facet of this campus and also as many schools as she can touch. And certainly being a critical part of this conference, um, she's helping all of us um, elevate our skills. And Lisa Carey, who's been uh, an amazing 
um, success story of the fellowship at Kennedy Krieger and going across the country to really help people understand UDL. The thing that I think is now going to move this whole effort forward is the fact that at the federal level, there's a recognition that UDL is critical if we're to achieve the reauthorization of ESEA, which is now Every Student Succeeds Act. And if every student is going to succeed, they are not going to succeed without the implementation with fidelity of UDL. And so all of you today are ambassadors and disciples, disciples to take back to your individual jurisdictions, countries, et cetera, what the depth of UDL has to offer our students in the whole um, trajectory of learning. And there are so many, as I looked at this program, which is so amazing, as I looked at it and saw all the configurations of how UDL can be expressed, the research piece of it that's ongoing. So I think it's important, I know uh, Dr. Berquist has given you the link to look at how UDL is integrated in terms of the reauthorization of ESEA. I think everyone should look at that because we, as I felt as a state superintendent, it wasn't good enough to send a directive. It wasn't good enough to send guidance. There had to be teeth in this. And passing it, both from the perspective of the legislature in saying this is important enough, we need a task force to look at this, to the point where we were able to place it in literally the school law, the requirements of the law. And I just think until we have those kinds of um, teeth in terms of how we do this and how it benefits our students. I do think the research part of this is so important and people like David Rose and so many others in this audience are really focused on that research piece because we have to be able to say how it has benefited students and how we begin to integrate this in a very important way in our teacher preparation programs. And I don't think we're there yet. I think we are giving people sort of um, surface knowledge of this, in, certainly on a, on a university campus, but in our teacher preparation programs, this has to be a centerpiece. So I am entirely grateful to you as being these incredible um, disciples and ambassadors that you will be because those who will benefit I know in our case it's almost a million students in the state of Maryland and in your case that's there's a multiplier effect to that that I really don't even know I know it's huge that you will be the people that will change the learning outcomes for our students and I can't thank you enough, and I'm honored that you're here on the Towson University campus. And to you, Dr. Berquist, um, congratulations in all that you do and bring to the state of Maryland. So thank you very much, and have a wonderful day.